What's your name? What's going on here today? Jen Peevler, trying to learn how to snowboard. How many attempts have you tried? Any days on the hill yet? So last weekend we went to Bragg for the Dew Tour games and um, did the bunny hills there. So I fell a lot. <laughs> all right, all right. That's part of learning. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Yuva and I am trying to learn how to snowboard. Cool. Have you tried it all before on your own before today? I have tried, I've taken two lessons so far in Breckenridge. Very nice. Yeah. Is that the Breckenridge Ski and Ride School? Yes, sir. Very cool. Yeah. That's a great place to start. I think uh, starting out taking a lesson is the way to go. Uh, my name is Carolina and I'm trying to learn some snowboarding stuff. Okay, you sound <laughs> like you're from Denver. Where are you from? <laughs> You're kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm from Argentina. Argentina. Yeah. Okay. Yuva sounds funny as well. She's from the uh, south side of Denver. Yeah. <laughs> Down there in Lake Hood. Yeah, Lake Hood is where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> this is a learning how to snowboard beginner's guide. If you have been snowboarding between zero and three days in your life, this video will help you. It will teach you how to work up to making your very first turns. All right, so any uh, beginning pointers, Fedge, to start out? Just keep your uh, weight over the board, centered. If you want to turn like this, you want to kind of use your back foot and put your shoulder the way you want to go. So if you want to go forward, you turn your shoulder this way and put your back foot out. And then if you want to turn this way, push, just kind of push it like this. The way I like to describe it is like a boat. This is a boat and then there's a, the, the steering for the boats in the back. It's called the rudder. Mm -hmm. And the rudder is your back foot. So you just want to lean this over in and kind of like that. That's the uh, easiest way to describe it for me kind of helps some people, some people it doesn't help. <laughs> um, but yeah, once you get it down, then you want to try to keep more of your weight over to your board so you don't use it as a rudder. And you want to use your edges with uh, your heel, both heels at the same time, and then your toes at the same time. But at first I would just try to get keep your balance and get your turning down. And then once you get that, you're gonna go heel to toe. But you wanna just get real comfortable on the board first. So We're gonna do the pre-heel prep. That's what we're doing right now, working on our stances. Okay, so I think a lot of good things start even before you go up to the hill to begin your Jedi training. <laughs> um, do you know you, you can be right-handed or left-handed? And you can also be right footed or left footed. Do you know if you are regular left foot forward or goofy right foot forward? We're both regular. You're no. both regular, that's yeah. good. That's so I'm regular as well. So that'll just be easy to stand train. there, we'll just stand like this. Uh-huh. Yep. Just stand. Okay. Ah! Ooh, very she, nice. She went right foot first. Right foot, yeah. Everybody see what Jen just did there? <laughs> if you uh, get pushed from behind. You'll usually lead yeah. with the foot that you are dominant with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so see how she was lunging with her left foot yeah. forward first. <laughs> see how see what Jen does. Yep, left foot forward for Jen. So what I sometimes do is have people stand there, close their eyes, and I don't explain what's going to happen at first, but I push them from behind like that to see if they're right foot first or left foot first. If you don't know at first, it doesn't matter that much when you start out, whether you're right foot forward or left foot forward, but it does help a little bit. So then, if you know you are left foot forward first, my board is set up for left foot forward first. Can you see the angle on this binding versus this one? This angle is more like this. This one's more straight across. Uh. And I think that really helps as you're starting out. And here's why. All right, young Jedi student, come stand <laughs> over here. And you 
will be first. So, okay, just stand there again and I'll push you gently. Mm -hmm. just, okay, stand there still. Push you like this. Okay, so you're if you're just standing exactly straight like that, you're a little bit more off balance. So this is an old Jedi master technique more borrowed from Kung Fu. But if your left foot forward, point this left foot toward Jen, and then keep this foot straight. This really helps you now when I push you. If I push you forward, this foot, back foot, helps keep you balanced. If I push you side to side, your front foot helps keep you balanced and centered. Yeah, get in your stance. This one I would do straight across if that was your board. Imagine your board's here, mm -hmm. and your front of your board's going that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now I push you forward and back. Yeah. Get the balance there, forward and back. Yeah. Balance from this one. That really keeps you stable and keeps you from falling all mm -hmm. these times. So it would be the opposite if you're goofy. If you're goofy, you want your right foot at the front angle like this and your back foot straight across the board. Mm -hmm. So an example would be if you were goofy, this foot would be out in an angle like this and the back foot straight across like that. So can I adjust those now? Then? So yeah, we can adjust those. So even oh, before no. you get on the hill, you can adjust your bindings to meet that stance. Uh, yeah. Okay, so instead of straight across, we want this more like this, at least for beginning. Yeah. Will you repeat that tip, Fedge, about uh, sticking with your one board so you can make when adjustments? When you start out, you just want to stick with the, your one board, and uh, that way you don't get another board and uh, your setup's different because. Uh, you know, just like surfing, if you got up on a surfboard, you're going to stand the same way on the surfboard that you feel comfortable, you know, if you're trying to learn to surf. You're not going to get on your surfboard and go like this, <laughs> or like this every time. So you want to stick with your same stance. Know your stance, goofy or regular. Regular, this would be the front, so this would be regular footed. Left foot forward, goofy, right foot forward. I'm goofy. So that's the way I ride. Yeah, the left one. The left one, okay. So all of our students today are left foot forward, riding regular. All right, good to know. Did you hear what I was telling them about the stance? No. Okay, <laughs> uh, we'll do it one more time. We hold that fed. Uh, okay, so what I was explaining, see how you're standing right now with yep. both feet straight out? Yep. A lot of times when snowboards are set up, they might be straight across with the feet like that. But that's... Uh, a little bit more difficult to balance like that. So if I gently push you around this way or that way, you're off balance. You got to take your step to, to balance yourself so you don't slip. Mm -hmm. But on a snowboard, when both of those are strapped in, you won't be able to do that. So what I like to do, starting out with, if you know your left foot's forward, take this left foot and point it out towards me. Yep, okay. keep your back foot straight. So this is a ninja kung fu Jedi stance. Because now, when I push you this way, that back foot or your front foot, excuse me, your front foot will help you balance whether you're getting pushed this way or that way. And if you're getting leaned to the side this way or that way, that back foot can still help center you. So we're changing our stances right now to get a more of a Kung Fu Jedi stance to begin with. So get those feet a comfortable distance apart from one another. You wanna help her with hers? So what I like to do, Jen, once you have that uh, distance between uh -huh. your feet yeah. at a comfortable spot. Okay. When you find that, I like to take a tape measure and measure from right here to right here, or some a yardstick sometimes, mm -hmm. so that you know that exact distance. I like to go very middle of the binding to very middle of the binding. This is pretty good uh, distance like this. Okay, yeah, if that's comfortable, so... I'd give that a shot. I just have no idea what that stance would be. My guess would be a 19, 18 inch stance perhaps. I go a little bit wider with my stance, so I have a 21 and a half inch stance. Mm. All right, Carolina's thing. board. What do you think? That's what she's got. So I would just angle this one more towards the front of the board, and it looks like it might be slightly wide. Also, before the hill, Jen's already been in her bindings, but you want to at least put your boot on and put your foot in there to make sure you can even yeah. strap those down. If this binding is too short right here, you can't even reach around your boot to clip this in. So you want this to be long enough to reach all the way around your boot. 
if uh, you want to own your own equipment so you can use the same thing every time. How did you go about finding a good deal on these boards or where did you shop? I went to Recycle Sports and I asked for help there because as I was uh, new in this world of snowboard, I asked the, the lady to help me find the right size of the board. Um, everything actually <laughs> very cool okay yeah. so that is a, like a thrift store or a new and used snowboard goods yeah. shop uh, I think it's just think so. used oh, okay. just used okay yeah. that's the one in Frisco yeah it's in Frisco yeah okay what Fed is looking at here is called forward lean it's how this binding stops up against this heel cup here to give you more or less forward lean so if this little slider was weighed down it would sit like more like this giving you more forward lean if it was further up it would adjust it to be more straight up and down mm -hmm. so take all the screws out okay and what you can do is pull the whole binding up and this little piece oh, pops up and twists oh, nice. so it's meant to sit across that. it's meant to sit across the board in one sort of direction there See how this one is set up? So yeah, those back screws just sitting like this. So now you can line up those holes easier. And so you can start with the disc like this and then adjust the binding accordingly. Uh, why did I take the boot thing off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So you kind of get your binding at the angle that you want yeah. and then slide that disc back in. Okay. But keep it how it was. You know, yeah, similar to that. A lot of bindings will have uh, numbers right here that'll that'll give you the angle of what that's at. So yeah, I see some numbers on there. On this one, there's a 30, a 15, a 10. No. All right, so it's important you want the right size screwdriver because you don't want to strip these out. So you want a lot of downward pressure and the right size screwdriver to hit those holes. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, it's fun to get on your bike at home. Up around. Dry land Jedi training. You know, learn how to ollie, like, you know, push off your back. Like a skateboard. There you go, yeah, that's good. Alright, next step is the backflip. Carolina, you're first. <laughs> Doing a backflip. The backflip. Yep, that's what everyone wants to learn. Backflip. First day. <laughs> Alright, how you feeling? Hey, he yeah, didn't yeah. fall over. <laughs> Stance maybe help a little bit. Okay, good. Yeah. I think uh, when I get home, I'll adjust it a little bit. Yeah. A little bit wider and more angled. Yeah, just keep tweaking it. Yeah. And make sure that you use a big screwdriver, get it cranked down all the way tight. Feels pretty good though. All right, good deal. All right, so how long should your board be? A lot of people say good rule of thumb is if the top of your board comes to about to your chin. So this is my board. It's a little bit tall for Jen probably for starting out maybe it'd be a good powder board for her sometime what is so, uh, what does that mean powder board so a powder board a, a wider board a longer board uh, more surface area gets you up and floating on the powder if there's only you know six inches of powder you want to be up on top of that and float 
usually the smaller skinnier board a softer board is better for park mm -hmm. uh. cruising around the mountain uh. yep. all right everybody has their stances dialed how they want them totally everyone is able to strap in get, this one. Oh, there we go. Uh, get their feet in their bindings all the bindings work a little bit different yeah. but you do want this one to get your foot sealed all the way to the back of the binding and then this one some go right across your toes to hold your toes down some are more in the front to keep your foot even further back cool now that we have those pieces ready i think yeah. we're ready to uh head to the hill Let's do it. we're going to start out small and work our way to the bigger hills all right, so when most people get to the top of the hill, they sit down and they put both feet into their boards. But what I like to do is just put your front foot in. Because when you have both feet in, then you're locked in, you're committed, you're gonna have to try ma start making your turns. But for now, just strap your front foot in. Yeah. The reason is this, one of the hardest parts is getting on and off the chairlift and you'll only have one foot in when you do that. And that's usually your front foot. Yeah, I was showing her the Charlie. Cool. Yeah, some of this we might have to repeat. These guys might have heard it as well, but trying to do the complete beginner's guide. Okay, with just your front foot in, I think this is more similar to walking because you have one back foot. If, if you've been walking around on the ice, if you slip, you'll try to catch your balance by moving one foot clo quickly, uh, leaving the other one intact maybe to, to study yourself. And so you can do that as you're starting out snowboarding as well. You don't have to put two feet in right off the bat. So what I like to do is just tell people to try this out at first. Uh, whatever heel side maybe you're more comfortable on, maybe you're more comfortable on your toe side, but whatever side you're more comfortable on, just try to go down the hill with the, with the back foot out. And if you start to lose your balance, then you can catch yourself with that back foot. There you go. Just get the feeling of sliding like that on your toes. Well, that's a good idea, yeah. That's it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See, instead of falling right there back on your butt, yeah. you just were able to take one foot out and, and catch yourself. And so you can do that for as long as you want. Instead of starting off with the falling leaf is what they call it, where you're going on one edge all the way back in the hill, coming back the other way. Just get the feel of sliding around like that. <laughs> Yay, made it. Yeah! <laughs> First trip down. All right, you just completed your first hill. How many times did you fall? Uh, not fully once. I'd say, yeah, zero. Yeah. You put your hands down a little bit to catch yourself, yeah. but that conserves a lot of energy when you're not having to pick yourself up from the ground from scratch starting every time. Looks like you're more comfortable on your heel. That's fine. There you go. Oh, she fell. So yeah, you can even even go slower, but you can go super slow. Just to ha keep your balance the whole time. And yeah. that was good though. <laughs> now, even though you did fall, was that easier to get up? Yeah. Because you had one foot out. You yeah. just put the one foot out and stand right back up yeah. and you're ready to go again. So instead of one foot in, it's nice to have a friend to help you steady yourself. Another point of contact with the ground. You might put your arms on the other person's arms. It's all about getting that feeling of sliding over the earth. <laughs> Giving another shot, Jen? Yeah. See, I just try a couple more of those toe sides. And then if that starts to feel smooth, then flip it around and work on your heels. Yeah! Sweet! Once again I saw zero falls. But I think that helps just uh, getting the feeling of sliding over the ground and what, how much pressure or not to put on your edge. For too much pressure it's going to make you fall. Yeah, just keep doing that till you kind of get the feel of it. Now, if you lean too far forward, uh -huh. you're going to catch that front edge. Yeah. So, as you're able to go faster and faster, then move your foot 
you know, more and more onto the board. There you go. Now you're getting your heels. So part of it's just practicing like this. Getting used to sliding on your heels like that. Nice. See if you can make it to the bottom. All right, heel edge. <laughs> Across the hill like that, that's your brakes. As the nose of the tail is pointed down the hill, you're going to speed up. So nice and steady, nice and slow, just like Jen's doing right here. Sliding down the hill, getting used to that heel side. There you go. Awesome. If you keep doing those, you'll start to get the feel of where your weight needs to be. Yeah. How to stop yourself. Yeah, I think it's a nice transition because it's comfortable. You know, you're not. I'm. I'm not as afraid with the one foot out. Yeah. So. You, you won't be afraid to give you a little more confidence, and it'll just. Uh, it's all about preserving that energy. And once you're falling so many times, you get sore, and that's when you get hurt and want to give up. Yeah. Yeah, I just run on the energy to get back up. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, the first time down that I took the lift and went down to Breckenridge, I was so tired from falling that I was like, oh, <sighs> I wanted to get back on the bunny hills and learn a little bit more. Yeah, that's what I did when I was learning. I just picked myself up so many times and became exhausted. Yeah. I'd have to give it a few days to heal up and then try it again. But yeah. There you go. Carolina's getting it. Nice. Yeah, that was good. Oh, Go back this way. Back that way. Nice. Here. So what happened there? Look at that mark in the snow. Yeah. You got your edge in there. What the board is made to do is carve. So be totally on one edge mm -hmm. and now the other. So you you actually did a carve. You just body position wasn't in the right. Okay position to be able to do that it's really hard to carve when you're beginning a lot of people that have been snowboarding for years and years they don't even know how to carve but that's why that did that okay you, you set it on the edge and the board just took off gotcha. um, but you'll get there eventually you'll learn how to control those carves like that it takes a lot of energy to go from the sitting position to the standing position with no, both free strapped in <laughs> so you use a friend to help you stand up all right, and then when you're balanced, sometimes just using the buddy system for that extra hand out there will help you balance. <laughs> there you go. Nice. You can do that from the top of the hill all the way to the bottom. All right, both feet strapped in, no falls. Good. I did get some snow on my butt crack. But oh yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> snow down the butt crack. So what I like to do, I'll show you my under layer. My under layer, I have this really, really long elastic type shirt. Yeah. So I can tuck that way down in almost to my knees. Yeah. It looks silly without the snowboard pants on, but that helps keep you dry. Yeah, that's a good idea. In that long under layer shirt. Yep, getting the feel of the toes. Okay. Back foot like the rudder of the boat, like I said. You looked way more comfortable on your heel edge. So I'd say do a lot more practicing on yeah. that toe. Just sliding down this way of the hill, sliding that way. Okay. Back and forth. Until that until that starts to feel comfortable. Alright. We're working on the heel, the falling leaf. Even though you're more comfortable going on your toes at first, I think heel is nice to learn because you can see where you're heading. Yeah. When you're sliding on your toes, it can be blind. You can't look down the hill. But yeah. this way you can view what your 
aiming towards. Yeah, the, the problem that I was having in Breck, I was having to go toe edge a lot just because I couldn't get up yep. heel edge. Yeah. So I would uh, get up, you know, toe edge, and then I'd already start sliding down the hill. And at that point in time, it was like, okay, I guess I'm going toe edge. But the problem was, I was going toe edge, I would always want to look over, and so then I'd start turning, mm -hmm. and I wasn't get, getting that perpendicular, nice, slow, controlled. I was like, ended up going just like straight down parallel to the... Right, and yeah. And Picking fall. up a lot of speed and you'll fall so quick. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it's much easier to get up uh, when you're on your belly, yeah, laying on totally. the hill. Awesome. Yeah, you got it. That was good. Good control. So once you have your heel side turns, or where you can be on your heel edge and go pretty fast down the hill, you do that on your toe side edge. You want to link those two together, but that's where the problem begins. Because as soon as you're trying to transfer from your heel edge to your toe edge, you're going to be pointing downhill and picking up a lot of speed. So you, if you can go on your heels quickly and on your toes quickly, then you'll be more comfortable as you're making that turn over. As you're in that space where it's a little bit out of control, you're picking up speed, picking up speed, and you want to get back to either your heels or get back to your toes to slow yourself down. Chairlifters use the line for you to wait at. You wait until this chair swings around and then head on out. It takes a while to get up to the next line where you're gonna actually catch the chair. Jen is already a pro at this. <laughs> but you guys rode the chair, correct? No? Yeah. Okay. Thought you did. But yeah, she was cruising. It's nice you could just put your uh, board rested on the other foot. Yeah, that definitely helps. A little less weight. Less weight. Sometimes we've got snow on my board like this. I'll kick some of this off. A little less weight. But yeah, that's a good technique rested on this foot. Or sometimes a little bit dang. Turn around like that. This chair doesn't have a foot rest. Otherwise, you can do this. Move as well. You have a foot rest. Awesome. What's working for you, Yuba? Ah, uh, starting with the toe edge works. And um, I can easily turn myself to come back to the heel edge, but once I'm on heel, turning back to toe. It's slightly difficult. A little bit harder. A little bit harder, yeah. Yep, usually one turn is harder to make than the other. So you discover it's harder to get back to your toe edge. Yeah. But you'll get that just with more practice. Mm -hmm. Just doing it over and over. Yeah, I hope so. Alright, are you having fun? Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome. That's the best part. Yeah. So what I was having Yuba do is work on her turns linking up her toe side to her heel side oh. and you can do that by steering with this shoulder your front okay. shoulder but you can move your shoulder just like that back and forth and not really steer so what i was having her do when she wants to go that way i was having her take this hand and point that way really hard to make sure your shoulder goes that way okay and then when you want to turn back to your heel side turn take this hand and go all the way back like this point back up the hill okay. and that'll force that shoulder to go in the right direction because you can steer your snowboard and not be doing that yeah. with your front hand, but you can, you'll be off balance. Okay. That'll make sure you stay on balance and keep, keep everything in line and in tune. Okay. So you can try that if you're feeling comfortable with it.
That was awesome. <laughs> you linked them up. One of the best tools when you're learning how to snowboard is doing what we're doing today. Filming yourself. Have your friend film you so you can watch yourself, see what you look like. You'll learn a lot from doing that. Nice, Jen. Yeah, linking them up. Snowboards have this hourglass shape. Wider here, skinnier in the middle, wider again. So what Jen is working on, so on this side too, wider up here, skinnier in the middle, wider down here. So when Jen is on her heel side like this, her board wants to take her that way because that's the natural way that snowboard wants to turn. So to get back that around to the toes, you got to get your snowboard from here, obviously, all the way that round to there. And to do that, you gotta get your weight just right. When you're on your toe edge, your board naturally wants to go that way because of that cut in the side of the board. Yeah, boy. How you doing? That's how we do it. <laughs> Carolina snowboarding, ladies and gentlemen. So now that you're comfortable with your speed, you have to be careful because people get really comfortable with their speed, they start going faster and faster. And that's when your hard slams can come. Yeah. You really catch a, a bad toe edge and you'll yeah. go right to your face. Catch your back edge and go right to your back of your head. But yeah. the speed that you're getting on this slope is fine. You're not gonna too injured, I don't believe. Yeah. And the speed that you're going with, I think is... Uh, The speed that you're going at is uh, easier to make turns. Yeah. When you're going really slow, it's hard. When you're going super fast, it's hard. Yeah. But it's that bounce right in the middle. It's called Fedge Press. The Fedge Press. <laughs> Twirly bird. <laughs> yeah. Getting more and more control. Awesome! Shrimp and business. <laughs> shrimp, Forrest Gump. Shrimp cocktail, shrimp sandwich, shrimp, shrimp soup. Shrimp sandwiches. End of the day, you're all snowy. You don't want to just throw your things in a pile because they'll get soggy and stinky.
mildew, right? Ew, yep, mildew, <laughs> just like being in the rain, so lay out all of your gear near the fire or hang it up at least. I got my whole drying system here. Hang things on these doors. I got another door over here. And you can uh, even hang your gear off your pinball machine. <laughs> Keeps that pinball machine paint nice and pristine. Home <laughs> use only. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Now we do hang our coats on games like Golden Tea. Sometimes it's known as the Golden Coat Rack. We like to keep our pinball machines nice and pristine. But if there's a crappy old game like Golden Coat Rack, go ahead and uh, throw your wet gear on there. <laughs> After you are comfortable with the basic techniques featured in this video, you will learn a lot more about snowboarding on Ryan Napton's YouTube channel. If you do an internet search for the term Ryan Napton snowboarding, I'm sure you will find him. But I've included some links to his videos and Ryan Napton's channel in the description of this video. The spelling is Ryan Napton, R-Y-A-N-K-N-A-P-T-O-N. When you reach the point when you can go from your heel side edge to your toe side edge without falling, then it is time for you to learn how to ride the edges of your snowboard for more controlled turns. This is called carving, and there is no better Jedi Master Instructor than Ryan Napton when it comes to learning how to carve. In other words, make proper turns. This video follows Jen, Yuva, and Carolina for a half-day training session with instructors Fetch Kanar and myself, Trailer Tom. We start out at Rainbow Park in Silverthorne, Colorado. Then, when the ladies are ready, we went up to Arapahoe Basin, Colorado, sometimes called A Basin, and rode the lift named Molly Hogan, the beginner's lift. You will fall when you start snowboarding, so I encourage you to stick with snowboarding for at least 5 to 10 days before you really get the hang of it. Good luck with your first trip to the nearest resort, and may the force be with you.